Welcome back to Star Wars Minute. It's the daily podcast where we analyze, scrutinize, and celebrate the Star Wars movies one minute at a time. I'm Pete the Retailer from P3Taylor.com. Oh, I'm Alex Robinson from AlexRobinson.fun. And I'm Ken Plume from KenPlume.com. And I was surprised you had that gap there. Did you forget you were on the show, Alex? Yeah, you know where you are? <laughs> we just lost in your reverie for a moment. I was uh, I was distracted by watching myself on the video, and, uh, and you know I just got some so vain that I uh, I couldn't I uh, forgot. So yes, for this episode right. I went and got my solo oh cup. solo cup your red solo cup. Um, well thanks thanks for twenty four ninety nine. Yeah, thanks for joining <laughs> us again, Ken. Thanks for bringing your your cup. Yeah, I even brought the topper with me. Oh oh, oh look at that! That is a that is a nice topper. Hmm. Um. Today we're talking about minute twenty-two. Two two. Mike Bossy of a minute. Um, <laughs> minute twenty-two starts with the beast grabbing Corporal Solo and smashing him into a big stick, and it ends with Corporal Solo telling the beast to look big stick. So there we go. It's a it's a, it's a, it's very centralized, very condensed action. It's all right here. And here's where I had my question about: Is what's what's the beast's motivation here? Is he hangry? Probably, largely. He hasn't eaten in three mm-hmm. days. Does he also hate all Imperials? Most likely. He's mm-hmm. been imprisoned by them. Um, and is there anything else going on there? Like what? Granted, you know, our, our, we don't have a, a, a complete knowledge of his personality outside the, the titular Star Wars. But like, if, if he was, you know, if he had just come from Denny's and he, you know, was had run into some people in a, in a different, you know, so let's say somebody cut him off in the Trader Joe's parking lot after he went to Denny's, went to Trader Joe's, somebody, somebody, uh, uh, you know, cuts him off in the parking lot. He's on a full stomach. <laughs> is he, is he going to eat that person or is he just going to be like, is he just going to grumble and maybe honk his horn and then just, just, you know, go about his day? I mean, is that a common thing we keep hearing about? I mean, I don't recall prior to this hearing about Wookiees eating people like, like you play up dismemberment yes yeah. dismemberment yes but not the whole eating aspect right. of it like i can say oh yeah he's probably going to rip someone's arm off if you know they blocked him in mm-hmm. in the parking lot right <laughs> but not that he's going to eat the arm yeah i feel like they if that was a thing they would have like it would have become more apparent certainly during the the uh endor battle that would have been right. the perfect opportunity for him to be chomping down on stormtroopers as they mm-hmm. were fighting and stuff. Well, but that's a similar situation. It's like, okay, life or death scenario. I hate the Empire. Why wasn't he eating stormtroopers? Is what I'm saying. Is this because he he had recently eaten? He had that that raw meat on a stick at the Ewok place. Um, I we don't know. I mean, it could be humans don't taste good generally. Hmm. It could be that he's in the middle of a battle, so it's he you know, also can't he devour an entire one in that situation. But I mean, he still has a relatively one. human-sized mouth, hmm. yeah. so it's not like he's going to devour one quickly. It's going to be a lot of chewing, a lot of gnawing. That's why. That's how he gets his name, <laughs> right? Or I mean, it could be. I mean, he might just not enjoy killing, you know, sentient creatures. You know, mm-hmm. he's still like a, he has the same code, I guess, that humans could, but like they don't. Like generally, like to eat can you know cannibalism except right. for rare circumstances. I mean, yeah, it's like, it raises a bunch of questions about Wookiees specifically, but also in general. Like, I guess we've addressed this before. Like, if is there a is there could there be a, a species that's like, yeah, we enjoy eating humans. They're a delicacy in our culture. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, is that something that we could encounter in the? Have we Star got? Wars? Have we have we gotten that sort of? Species that enjoy, I mean, the only one we've really seen chow down on anyone is a Rancor, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, presumably the Wampa would have eaten Luke, I imagine, hmm. if 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 left to his own devices. Yeah, but we, uh, we saw the maybe Rancor he just wanted them as on like on a it. ceiling decoration. Maybe they he tend was just to be like more a, monsters than like. Maybe that was a display human. We don't know what he was intention mm. was with Luke. He oh, hung him up. He hadn't eaten him. <laughs> Put <laughs> lipstick and an eyelashes on him. <laughs> He's, he's working on his still life, and he wanted to. He needed a model. Dress me up, Luke. <laughs> or it's like a it's like a baking soda in a refrigerator type thing. You know, it's like oh, oh right. keep yeah. it in here, and it like 
refreshes it. The humans refreshes absorb it. all the odor. It's, it's, Maybe he doesn't like them warm. Maybe it, it's like cold yeah. pizza. Mm. So, but in general, Chewbacca, it's weird. He kind of straddles the line. But between... he's not General Chewbacca yet. <laughs> no, that's right. Sorry, I mean, like, Wookiees in general straddle the line between. Um... Is he not a general? Was he not a general in the Clone Wars? What was? Oh, I'm, I'm saying not yet. Here, he's just the beast. I've oh never no! Heard him the film, he's not... General Chewbacca. That would be. That would be I think great. it's just more of the general anti wookie racism that you know. That's what yeah. I mean. He's he's kind of treated as like a hybrid between a dog and a and a man. <laughs> he's like a <laughs> mog. You know, he's like <laughs> he's um. You know, like the way Han talks to him is the way someone would talk to a dog. Chewie, Chewie, come here, Chewie. Chewie you know, he's calling. He, Put and, that uh, down. Do yeah, that. Not see, this. See whatever you listen to me. You know, he's he mm. not someone who's what two hundred years older than him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but everyone <laughs> treats him kind of as like the sidekick. No one, no right. one treats Chewbacca as if he is his own thing. He's always seen as Han's like accessory. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, so uh, it's almost weird. like Han's know. droid. Yeah, kind of, so yeah, I'm not sure what the status of Wookiees is as I mean they have representation in the Republic, we knew that. But mm. we knew what no during the Empire that they were made slaves. Right. Right. And uh So is this a thing in general where And Wookiees we know they were hunted as well. As if they are We know what, Trandoshans yeah. hunt them. Right. So they were also hunting fodder. Right. Now you think it's purely because of their their difficulty speaking basic, you think if they were if but have we encountered a Wookiee who speaks basic at all? I know we've had a Jedi Wookiee. Isn't there mm-hmm. a Jedi Wookiee in the High Republic stories yeah. that are going right now? It's probably it's probably easier to do yeah. in a book because you don't have to have a a, yeah. a, a, you know, a Wookiee going, Hello, I want to be a part of the gang. I, I, I can't remember if it was a bit or if it was an actual thing from from uh a, a book or something like that, but there was a there was a Wookiee who could speak basic because he had a speech impediment. He had a Shirawook speech impediment, which allowed him to be more adept at speaking basic, and so he would be like, yes, yeah, hello. Oh, and that he was totally, he would have been voiced by like, you know... Uh, but we know there's devices that also will translate yeah. <laughs> into basic. What's the, like, uh, uh, what is uh, Hammerhead? What is What is his species? Uh, hammerheads. Uh, Moma Nadon. Oh. What is his? What is his species? Yeah, yeah. because um, we've seen in Ithorian. Book of Boba Fett that the uh, Ithorians have yeah, right. a device that will translate. A little translator. Yeah. It was not a bit. It was in. Uh, it's uh, Ralra, Ralra Chin, also known as Ralra. It was a male Wookiee who served as an ambassador for Kazook after dealing with the Galactic Republic. Uh. He had a speech impediment with, which made him easier to understand when speaking to non wookies a useful trait when dealing with others in his diplomatic work. Diplo-speak. Where was a uh, Rebel Dawn? Star Wars Adventures, Chewbacca and the Slavers of the Shadowlands. Heir to the Empire, first appearance. Oh, that's okay. So it was from Heir to the Empire. So you think Ch- Chewbacca's Ch- just been speaking like really lazy basic this whole time? Like he hasn't, wa- like sort of like really Schwarzenegger doesn't want to put in the effort to drop the accent. Well, it's, it's also, there's, uh, I think there's, you know, languages develop because of physical characteristics often. Uh, and so they're, yeah, are, you know, physical. I wouldn't expect, I, I you know, how can Han uh, later, we'll, we'll see the Corporal Solo can speak the beast's language. Um, yeah, in this minute, actually. And uh, the the fact that he's able to kind of get close to speaking that is, ju- I don't know, is it equally as impressive? I don't know. I, I feel like there's a physicality that you can't really do. Um, Maybe Wookiees just don't just choose not to learn basic. I think it, it's really tough for them, unless, like, like Ra well, yeah. you have a, a physical Be- because uh, of the way they're Because of the way their our mouths are shaped, like no matter how you could, if you could impl- imprint a human brain into a chimpanzee, their mouths are just not capable of making the same sounds because of the way they're, you know. So yeah, yeah it's like Scooby. Right. Are you calling Scooby Doo lazy? <laughs> because of <this. laughs> I wouldn't he, say he's the most hardworking dog in the world. I mean, well, I guess he does solve mysteries. That's pretty yeah, good. That's yeah, pretty good. Come on, uh, he's got a job. If you can get it. But also, I guess, huh, I guess Luke uh, Lucas started because he never gave Chewbacca subtitles, which kind of mm-hmm. set the precedent for, like, it kind of doesn't matter what Chewbacca says. Right. So I lobby that we should do all the movies over with, or just put subtitles on Chewbacca. It's not that hard to mm-hmm. 
Or I know I know plenty of wags have done it. Leave a comment below telling us. <laughs> leave, put a link to some YouTube videos because I know people have done that. Put subtitles on. Um, right. I don't Mickey. hear d- d- difficulty level. Don't don't just make it dirty words. It's that's funny sometimes, but if you just do the whole thing, or what if it's just it constant Shakespeare quotes? Sometimes. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> See Shakespeare. Shakespeare's funnier for yeah. Chewbacca. Oh, I like, want it to be all product placement stuff. R two D two being a foul mouth, a you know, sailor <laughs> is is different. <laughs> Maybe um, that's it. Maybe he was just trying to sell Amway the whole time. Right. That's why he's in prison. <laughs> that's why Han was just so frustrated with it. No, you focus on that thing. No, I'm not going to buy the brushes. What do you know? <laughs> You know what could really get us out of this situation? <laughs> or I guess if they, if they wanted to make him like a dog, he could totally just be like, "Hey, did you do we have any treats? Do you have any treats in your yeah. pocket?" Or you know, like. <laughs> and that go? goes back to Han's line in the last minute. Yeah, yeah, you like treats. Uh, well, here's something that I'm sure we brought up before on the show, but um, the, the origin of the word Wookie. Hmm. Uh, it was uh, a line from the George Lucas George Lucas classic THX 1138, where uh, actor Terry McGovern uh, improvised a line uh, where he said uh, some guy was driving a vehicle and he says, I think I ran over a Wookiee. Hmm. And George Lucas thought that was funny and put that in the as one of the, you know, uh, dubbed in lines. Uh, Ralph Wookiee was a, a childhood friend of actor, actor Terry McGovern. So he mm. improvised it as like, you know, if he used it, he thought his friend Wookie, Wookie would hear it and be like, oh my gosh, but I just heard my name in THX. <laughs> and now so, his friend is just like, come on! <laughs> You've made my family's life so right. difficult. So does that put THX in the Star Wars universe then? Hmm. Because... No, I, I, I mean, I think they've just seen Star Wars. Oh, okay, so... That's the thing. Yeah, that'd be oh, ancient yeah. history for them. Right. Yeah, that's true. Those guys were uh, were classical film buffs. So when he said, "I think I ran over a Wookiee," like his other classical film buff friend was like, "Oh yeah, yeah. I remember." And that it was movie. a dog. Yeah. No, because it, it, I mean, there's still there's still new Star Wars content coming out in in THX one one three eight. It's still just going on. They're all watching Plus. It's Disney yeah. Plus. Just goes right into your brain exactly. through uh, <laughs> through nodes. Totally like can Plus Ultra. Um. The. Uh, my next note is muddy fur bite. Because, Ugh, yeah, gross. I we've mean, already, we've already speculated about what I mean. Okay, hey, could be wrong. Could be maybe the Mimban mud is delicious. Maybe but Han's Han the, maybe literally Han's fights catalog. dirty. <laughs> hmm? Yeah. I mean, all of Han's fighting is is just about as low down as you can get. Right. When it comes True, to. He tries, he tries to throw mud. He tries to bite him. Mm-hmm. He does yeah. bite him. Uh, Wait, is everything he does a a an idiom? Like he's a mudslinger? Is he a backbiter? Is he? Are there other things that he does that is like every <laughs> every single thing is an idiom? Like here, backstabber. Now that would be that would be attention to detail if that right. turned out to be true. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and and, and is Chewbacca trying to kill him? No, it's just it's just because Chewbacca because. We have been told Wookiees are incredibly strong. You would think mm-hmm. he would make quick work under normal circumstances. Is it because he's starved? Yeah, I think that he he's not been, able to tear him weak. apart. Mm-hmm. Although, yeah, although some of these throws, I would think, I mean, at least could have some serious lower back issues. Oh, sure. With although some think, of these slams. He is still wearing his armor, I believe. His, oh, yeah, so he's he just is. jelly inside it. Right. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's what that's like. The, that's the really the proper way to eat a, to eat a human to eat an imperial. That's that's true. He's doing the he's he's learned. He remembers Chef Gourmand doing. It's like oh, first you got to whack it around a little bit inside the shell. To Maybe it was it Han's up. intention to turn the tables and try eating Chewbacca. There you go. See how he likes it. Yeah. <laughs> So you could who could eat the most of each other first, and then whoever. And also, that's a lot of mud and fur. Do you think that was just a mouthful of mud, and that he never actually got a bite in? That's a lot to get Mm. down to actual. Chewbacca howls, but I feel like Han had to have gotten the worst of that. Maybe it was because the insult of it. Like, what are you doing? (laughs) 
I think Mim Man Mud is delicious, and I, it, so much so that it would be a dessert at the whatever the Space Denny's is that Chewie went to before he went to the Trader Joe's parking lot. I bet they have a dessert called Mim Man Mud. Mim Man Mud sounds like a drink. Mm-hmm. Or do you think that's what they store? That's what they store in this. That's what this thing was originally used for storing, like the oh, yeah, it's the pudding container. The pudding <laughs> <laughs> space pudding. Yeah. They just all had dessert. It was the now, mess hall. Now I'm, uh, now, I'm, uh, now I'm on board. Well, you've done a good job subjugating the people of Midman today. How about some Midman mud, everyone? <laughs> yeah. Tuck in. One thing I said was that um, considering what Chewbacca is doing to Han, and there's no doubt any of these things easily would have killed him. I mean, picking a guy up and throwing him like a, like how he would not be. But his head, his neck. Armor. Like, that doesn't. <laughs> yeah. The only time I think that he would have taken injury is when he hits that pole. Otherwise, mm. that's pretty deep mud that I think would soften any blows as far as the, the whenever he was thrown to the floor. Well, but considering this, I think Lando got off really easy in The Empire Strikes Back when when he unshackled uh, Chewie and then Chewie immediately just started choking Lando. Right. Because imagine now, imagine him picking Lando up and throwing him around the room and stuff. That would have been crazy. Right. He could have given. Or Han like, got off hold. easy and, and he didn't decide to just choke Han at the beginning well, the, of this. Well, yeah. That's what then he does. So then once the once the uh, Stadler and Waldorf stormtroopers here, <laughs> once they're like like oh it's like you know I just was getting kill, good like kill, kill him, him slower, slower. Yeah. kill him slower <laughs> kill him slower can we make a can we make a Metallica shirt except it says Mimban where instead of Metallica and instead of kill them all it says kill him slower we got to write yeah. these down we, do so they far have we names have... do they do those troopers have names you know I that's the type of thing and, that and I and were they cameos because it seems like that would be cameo fodder. Vocal cameos, yeah, like no, that should it's... that would have been Lord and Miller. I bet if they oh, had stayed they on the had film. stuck with it. Well, we did get the. Um, I, I don't think this is them because they don't. They don't. Um, it's Tag and Bink. That's what I was gonna say. I don't think it's Tag and Bink because they're too. Mm-hmm. They, they're too mean spirited to be Tag and Bink. And they, I assume, and die were, at the end of this as well. They were in. Um, I think they should think they feel like they would have survived. You well, think? We'll, we'll we'll come back to that. Yeah, we'll too. get that. We'll get to that. <laughs> they did. They were. They yeah. Um, but uh, as soon as che- they say kill him slower, Chewie's like, oh, I'm gonna kill him fast now because he's so like that. I see he's so rebellious. He's such a so contrarian. Yeah, that he's just like, oh, kill him slower. Okay, and then he goes in to choke Han, and then, and then Han is in real danger. All right, which yeah. they should have had a mirror of Lando's negotiation lines from Empire right. when he's when Han is being choked. <laughs> yeah he's like or, there's still a chance to save me <laughs> retroactively they should have they should go back and redub have donald glover come in and dub that scene in shirawak so when he's choking <laughs> in in empire when when he's choking lando he could he could be saying you know there's still a chance to save han but in shirawak so i like that <laughs> so where where did han learn this i mean uh, added to the mystery of how did Chewie get here to this mm-hmm. hole in the mud? When when did Han learn this language? Well, I'm gonna guess that they did some story. The same way Ray could understand Chewbacca is they they explained it by she once met some some Wookie um, travelers and they taught her Wookie. And I'm sure that's the same thing. You know, Han met some person who, or maybe it's an imperial thing. Maybe that he had in the past subjugated. You know, as part of a campaign, wasn't that well, originally part of the canon meeting of like in Legends? Yeah, now? yeah. Well, it was the yes. It, although they were ne- they were never allowed to talk about that specifically. It was alluded to. Yeah, but I think they were never allowed to actually flesh that out. But I think it's. I would assume it's more from just being you know living in a port city or next to a port city and pulling scams and. Um. I mean, I, versus... I mean. Ray, I would I would attribute it mostly to the force. Uh, Han, I would say he just lives in a port city. Because Ray the also understands being the Duolingo the of the yeah, exactly. <laughs> I definitely Star think it's universe. something where they went for the joke over any real logical reason. To, I'm sure no one had said, "Well, wait a minute, how would Han have learned this language?" You know, right. I mean? I'm sure right. they didn't give it any thought. So, right. um, we don't talk about the but, natural yeah. curiosity of Han Solo. Just the no. fact that he's always yeah. teaching. Himself, new languages, and wouldn't that be funny if he actually learned? You know, he could actually speak eight languages or some crazy. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> no, like, you know, he at least understands like, oh, this street urchin, and he's like going through. You know, speaking. He grew up right outside the languages. UN, so that's right, why yeah. he kept he kept meeting a lot of uh, uh, people. 
just late at night, just he's going back and forth with C-3PO. It's like, give me another language. I, um, I find the scenes with Han speaking Wookiee, uh, cringy. Hmm. I, I, for some reason, him doing it, it just, I, um, I don't know. I, I'm not sold on it. Not that I'm not sold on it. Like because it sounds comical? Yeah, it sounds more comical than it does, like, I don't know. Like a desperate tactic to stay alive. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe well, that's part of the tonal thing that was difficult for Lucasfilm to wrap their head around. But was... this made it to the to the movie, though. That's the thing. But we also don't know how much of things made it to the movie just because they didn't have the time or the money to refilm certain things. Hmm. I think I no, I could totally see this as being a thing people like. I'm sure a lot of people. Thought it was, I'm sure I could see how people thought it was really funny and a good, you know, it's funny hearing anyone try to do it. Mm. So, right. um, I, you know, maybe it's just one of those things where it's just a joke that didn't work for me. But, like, I literally can't watch him do it. it it's like <laughs> I have to avert my eyes from the screen <laughs> or my ears from the screen, the speakers. So, uh, maybe I it's just me. love it. Okay, man, there you I go. Think it's terrific. Different and especially, I know we, we, we just joked about a show. I think the, 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 Bim Ban uh, uh, Kill Him Slower shirt is is a, a funny thing to talk about, but I th- I feel like I do need a real shirt, or maybe maybe it's not a shirt. Maybe it's more of like a meme thing. I want to take a, a a meme with like the, you know, the American flag and the bald eagle, and write on it, "You and I, freedom make by secret battle of pretend," <laughs> because that that and on the back it just says "Big Stick," <laughs> right? Look, Big Stick <laughs> with a flagpole. Like That's for the yeah. yes. <clears throat> um. Yeah, I, I, I totally, uh, um, you know, I am a sucker for any time you have, like, you know, bad translations, you know, mis- yeah. mistranslations, bad translations. I think language humor like that is hilarious. Um, but, you know, I think I've said before that when in uh, Star Trek VI, when Uhura is looking in the book trying to speak Klingon, some things, speak Klingon that, yeah. that hilarious. Um, yeah. Anything like that is always good to me. But Han tried. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And I ju- I, now I'm just disappointed we never, got, we never got to see Harrison Ford do it. <laughs> can you imagine? <laughs> you can imagine. He would never have done that in a thousand no. years. <laughs> no. I don't know. It depends on how high he was. Yeah. I, I feel like there's like, <laughs> there's that small window. Like, like if they had come up with this joke for the holiday special, they probably have, would have pitched something like this for the holiday special. Like, come on. Like, you know, uh, uh, Pat Proft he, or, or uh, what's his name? I can't believe they Bruce couldn't Philance. get Arcardi to do I, I it. They, I, Bruce, bet they, I bet Bruce Philance would have done it. And, yeah, I, bet, and I bet Harrison of that time would have done it just as saying. a, because he wasn't like the Harrison like, that we know. I mean, he wasn't the superstar that he would yeah. become at that point. No, he was but still he, already, he already I mean, looked he, uncomfortable in that holiday went, special. Yeah. So. <laughs> right. He was still thinking about getting back to cabinet installations at that point. He had to go yeah. build, uh, what was it, Sergio yeah. Mendez studio? Yeah, he was gifting yeah. everyone bookends. It's funny because I guess when they were uh, filming the original Star Wars, the actors had no idea what he would sound like because they hadn't, like, we all know what she sounds like. All the was done in post, yeah. Right, yeah, right. So, so he just sounded uh, like Peter Mayhew. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, they should have had Han do it on the set, but then he wouldn't have heard, he wouldn't have known <laughs> He would have been was, doing so. Peter Mayhew's accent yeah. back to him. <laughs> that old man's mad. <laughs> <laughs> That's my Peter Mayhew imitation. That's good. Me? I like it. Boy, you- you said it, Chewy. Um, I do talk like that. See, like I, I talk like that to my cat. Which way? Like Han Solo. Like the way Han Solo talks to Chewbacca, I talk to my cat that way because I'm basically doing a Han Solo and I'm playing, like I'm in my head, you know, I, my cat is not really responsive and not, we're not having a conversation. In like, your head? You know, or it's... The cat meows and, uh, you know, I'll be like, oh, yeah, you said it. Or like, yeah, I know, I know, I got it. You know, that kind of a thing where I'm doing it. It's performative for my sake. Yeah. That I'm basically doing a little Han Solo bit and the cat's just, you know, hungry or needs his litter box cleaned or something. But he's, you know. But in yeah. your head, Catton. Catton? Ah. <laughs> uh, um, what are the, what are the, art, what do you, what, what personality have you assigned your cat? Like, how do you think the cat is responding to you? Um. He's, I mean, more or less like Chewbacca. He is, you know, he was a uh, uh, street cat, so he's got he's got like a tough past that we don't uh, you know we don't know about. And now he's uh, you know uh, family and kids legally to required see. to stay in my house. So like it's you know it's a it's a haunted Chewbacca situation. 
But there's a lot of back talk involved. Uh, he for me. Have you yeah. set up a, a formal life debt uh, agreement between the two of you? Yeah, it's pending. We're having it looked over. Okay. You know. <laughs> um. Then I'm gonna just take his paw and make a little stamp. Aww. <laughs> um. Yes, but that was my last uh, uh, You and I Free to Make by Secret Battle of Pretend is, is one of my favorite things to come out of this. Movie. It should be a song <laughs> lyric is what it should mm. be. Someone should put it in a song. But it should all be in, it should go back and forth between English basic and Sherwood. And so the English part should be like choppy. Well, we should, you know, like. Alex, can your brother make that song? Oh, yeah, totally. Going back and forth. You That's and I Free to Make like... by Secret Battle of Pretend. Can that be? Oh, yeah. That sounds like an epic. That sounds like a heavy thrash metal. <laughs> or a patriotic ballad. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like we got to stop the mosque at Ground Zero. You and I, free to make by secret battle of pretend. <laughs> that sounds like a uh, conquest of the West, or the what's the the, right, the, the backstroke uh, of the West? Backstroke of the West. It sounds like something that would would have been mm. that. Um, <clears throat> like that's how they would have described um, <laughs> some other Han scene. Solo <laughs> featured in Secret Battle of Pretend. Those lines need to be incorporated into the official Star Wars Minute Anthem. Hmm. That's all I got for this minute. Me too. <laughs> um, hey, if you, uh, um, if if any one of the things that we talked about today ends up being on a shirt, mug, etc., you know where you're going to find it? StarWarsMinute.com slash merch, M-E-R-C-H. It's true. That you can go check out our, our all our designs, most of which are available on pretty much anything that they have. Um, and I keep meaning, we keep working on new templates for new things to, to you can order. You know, there's like socks and leggings and, mm, you know, right. uh, um, shoes and skateboards and all kinds of things. So, um, who'd have guessed? So, go there, check it out, get some stuff. Ken, can you come back tomorrow? Sure, I guess. All right. There we go. See? Uh, you are chained <laughs> to a big stick. So, even if you don't, you're just going to have to stick around. Can so. we do a secret battle of pretend tomorrow? Yeah. In between, yeah. You've okay. got, you've got lots of, lots of secret battle of pretend. Uh, accessories behind you that I think you'll you'll win. But, <laughs> <laughs> Would you uh, like a treat? But find out tomorrow here on Star Wars Minute. Star Wars Minute. Star Wars Minute.